You're listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge Podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm Bree. And I'm Rachel. And now it's time for Erin's Recipe Card. And since we're in the Advent slash Christmas season, I have a feeling that this recipe card might have something to do with the season of the year. Indeed. Yay! Yes. All right. What do you have for us, Erin? Figgy oh. pudding. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. <laughs> no, it's a little crunchier than that. So, I am doing Christmas cookies yes. this time. One of the classic Christmas traditions of probably just... A, I don't know, everywhere. Everyone loves cook cookies, so I can't I can't imagine that it's somehow unique to America. Certainly isn't unique to Lutherans. No. But we get, we've all got our family traditions. So as I have done before in preparation for this episode, I reached out to my mom <laughs> to consult with her on what would be the quintessential Christmas cookie recipe that was also maybe a little bit more unique because, okay, so we were talking at lunch and I realized that the for me, the truly the quint, the essential cookie Christmas cookie that I am always disappointed if it turns out no one made it in a given year in our family so that once we all get together and bring out the full spread of all the cookies if it is missing snowballs Uh aka Russian tea cakes aka Mexican wedding cookies Mm -hmm. um that's when I'm Mm -hmm. I'm crushed Mm -hmm. uh it turns out I learned from talking with another friend that my family, we pretty much always, almost always, substitute pecans for any other nut hmm. in a Christmas cookie recipe, with rare exceptions. Sometimes if the cookie actually has almond in its name, then we'll keep using almonds. But it is very rare that we would use a walnut over a pecan Uh, So very rare. Uh, So we make our snowballs with pecans, chopped pecans, which apparently, oh, that's another name for it, walnut floofin. (gasps) What? Yes. That's an amazing Uh, (laughs) name. I've never heard that. It is a fantastic (laughs) name. It's true. So even though that is, for me, the essential Christmas cookie, though, I didn't feel like I wanted to make that as the recipe because everyone has that recipe. That's true. And there's a million variations on it, but they aren't really like dramatic variations. They, they're they going to be small incremental things. Substitute pecans for walnuts. <laughs> that's not a that's not a magical thing. So and they're kind of a mess. Yeah. They are a mess, but they're amazing. <laughs> they are. Yeah. Delicious. So I decided I should do something else. So then I was talking with my mom about whether or not I should choose between fudge meltaways <gasps> and the lace cookie. Ooh. And after consulting with her, we settled on the lace cookie because the fudge meltaway, while it is magical, it is basically a shortbread base with the cream cheese topping. And it's just chocolatey delicious. What? It is, but it's not it's not unusual. That is there's, true. It's it's it didn't have this sort of unique there there's cookies like that already out there. Whereas the lace cookie, which is what I settled on, is one that I've not I've I've not really had a cookie I have not come across a cookie like this on a Christmas cookie spread very often at all, um, possibly only by the actual original recipe provider, Sherry Hoskins, a woman at my mom and dad's church in Jeff City. Uh-huh. Uh, so that was that was the cookie that I made. Now we're gonna I'm gonna open up the tin because I actually had these out at the lunch table today. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I offered them to everyone at the lunch table, and then I was like, "Brie, you're not allowed to eat any of these because we Poor need a Brie. fresh reaction <laughs> for Poor the recording." Brie. So, so she's Brie. been waiting and waiting to be able to try these. These are crunchy, so we might have a little 
a little crunch. There might be some soundtrack. extra sound effects in this um, in this episode. This yes. tin is beautiful too. <laughs> I love Christmas yeah. cookie tins. I think are are part of the fun of Christmas cookies. Mm-hmm. They're always just. There's all those beautiful pictures and yeah. snow and they're red and green. Yeah. And so Bree's taking a picture of this. We'll, pretty... we'll show some pictures of this on yeah. in the Facebook group. They are so, shiny. They are. Are we taste testing these right away? Are we going? I mean, we going go for it. it. Yeah, you go for it. Crunch away. I may have already started. I did not make <laughs> these. Um, right before we were going to, about a half an hour before we were going to record, I said, oh, I forgot to make the recipe. <laughs> and then I said to eldest teenage daughter, "Uh huh, would you make <laughs> these cookies while I go up and get ready? And it actually worked out really well because um, the recipe, bless you, Aaron, has stuff in it that is like n- normally in my kitchen. I did not have to buy any herbs de Provence <laughs> for this one. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um yeah, so she actually, we, we know this is a fairly easy recipe to make because uh, my teenager made it for me and they're they're very delicious and yes, very crunchy. Um, yes. It so, is a simple recipe. That's good. Very few ingredients. Uh, so lace cookies, I'll, I'll do a quick rundown of the recipe here. Uh, it calls for one and a half cups of quick oats. Oh. One stick of butter. The actual original said margarine, but my mom has crossed that out Mm-mm. and it's butter. Butter's butter. Um, Good woman. So you melt the butter and pour it over the oats and stir it up. And then you mix three quarter cup sugar, a half teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of flour, That's it, huh? and one teaspoon of baking powder. Wow. Mix those up. And then you add those to the oats. And then you add one slightly beaten egg. I have a note saying large because sometimes they've been a little dry. So (laughs) one one slightly beaten large egg, Mm -hmm. one teaspoon of vanilla, and a half a cup of chopped pecans because my family likes those pecans. Yeah. And that's it. Wow, that is really simple. Yeah. Huh. I think I remember seeing something. You need to bake these on like parchment paper or wax paper. To make sure that they... Parchment. The original, Mm -hmm. again, called for aluminum foil. My family has made the switch almost exclusively to cook baking with parchment Mm -hmm. because the things just slide right off of that. There is no sticking. And you could just keep reusing the same piece of parchment to Mm -hmm. bake because you'll probably need to bake quite a few batches of these. It You drop them in half teaspoon mounds oh wow (laughs) it is a small little i mean you could certainly do bigger ones but that is also that's what the original called for and the altar slash lid key family philosophy (laughs) on christmas cookie size is that it should be small Mm. to encourage you to be able to eat many varieties That's considerate of people's cookie eating habits during Christmas. (laughs) Although I got to say, my uh teenager did not get the memo on that because these cookies are, (laughs) they are generously sized. But you know what? They are no less delicious for being sized. I'm sure that they would still be very tasty. Mm -hmm. Um, So the cookies, when you do them in a half teaspoon mound, you end up with a cookie that is probably like an inch and a half in diameter. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's a nice single bite or maybe two bites if you want to be really delicate. Dainty. Uh, dainty, Yeah, Bree's going one bite. Exactly. (laughs) They're they're great. So you bake them at 350 for 11 minutes, possibly less, um, until the edges turn slightly brown. Take them out of the oven, let them cool just a little bit, and then they will just slide off magically. Let them finish cooling. They'll be sort of soft at first, like often cookies are when they're fresh out of the oven. But as they cool, they will crisp up. And so they are just these light, crispy, crunchy, almost melt in your mouth uh, Mm -hmm. sort of a cookie. Mm. It is, it's, it's fantastic. They keep really well. Um, So they keep, you keep them in an airtight container and they'll, 
Well, I again, the Alter Lidke family philosophy of Christmas cookies is that you should be able to feel good about eating on these for a month. Uh, so they will. They will keep. They will keep. Uh, you can <laughs> you can enjoy these. They, they aren't going to just uh, suddenly go really stale or you don't need to refrigerate them or anything Unless like that. Unless you eat them all. You can certainly. I, <laughs> exactly the problem that I would have. I had several when I made them that that got a little darker. I didn't. I didn't catch the. I didn't start the timer quite on time, and then I was in a different room when the timer went off, and so they got a little brown. And I didn't want those to spoil the picture, so I took care of getting rid of those last night <laughs> myself. You took um, care of them. Thank you for. Yeah. So, also. While my mom was doing this, pulling together these pictures of recipes for me, we take notes. So we (laughs) don't do it quite every year because some years' schedules are just too hard. But many years, my mom, my sister, and I will get together and we'll spend a Saturday baking Christmas cookies. And then we divide them all up at the end so that we all go home with usually around six different Christmas cookies. uh, quantities of them so we can then take them to parties or just eat them ourselves um, bring them to the family christmas gatherings things like that so i've got all these notes on this but that leads to the poll that i put up and for science it's a little (laughs) bit it's a little bit of a stacked thing so i i asked only two questions um i asked whether which which Christmas cookie is the most essential Christmas cookie for you? Is it the sugar cookie that uses the cookie cutters and all the decorations, or is it any other Christmas cookie? <laughs> and it's good that I chose to do it that way because I think that is the only possible way that sugar cookies would have lost this poll. So, <laughs> because if we had allowed any other varieties to split that that other majority, sugar cookies would have carried it by far, I'm confident. Um, gingerbread really pushed hard. They really mm-hmm. wished that they had their own option, mm-hmm. but I didn't give it to them. The gingerbread lobby. Yeah, yeah the that. gingerbread lobby, but no, I said no. We're sticking to two choices here. So, sugar cookies came in second with 175 votes, only 48.2% of the total. Whereas all other Christmas cookies (laughs) got 188 votes. And you know what? By the time we're done, sugar cookies could yet win out because they had been, they had, they had been lagging behind and then they were picking up, um, so they might yet end up winning the total poll. Uh, my family, my family, we are not a sugar cookie family. We tried it one year. It was a disaster. <laughs> I had to call a friend for help. I'm like, what's go- What's wrong? And he tried to assist me because he's the magical cookie maker and he has all the different cookie cutters. And he tried to assist me over the phone. We got one set of halfway decent shapes cut out. The rest we made into lumps. <laughs> <laughs> the decorations, it's possible, like, they looked like bad Asian tattoos. Um, <laughs> I was trying to do, like, Christmas trees on them. Anyway, we are not a sugar cookie family, and that <laughs> reminded us of why we should stick to our roots. <laughs> and we are we are all the other cookies. We are the bar family and mm-hmm. the ball and the spritz. That is mm. sort of our variation on the sugar cookie is the spritz, which is sort of a pressed cookie. It presses out in a shape and then you can decorate it. Mm. But it ends up with more of a shortbread consistency mm. than a sugar cookie, which shortbread. I also love shortbread. So shortbread. Shortbread I would like to hear so from you guys. What for you mm. is the quintessential Christmas cookie that that just either it's the most unique one you can you can tackle this however you like but what Christmas cookie do you want to talk about? Mm. My family is definitely the snowball family and we definitely called them snowballs but I have fond memories of every Christmas making snowballs in my kitchen and getting powdered sugar 
everywhere. Yes. But they're so good and they're really simple. We're also the no bake family. Um, and I don't know if that was really a Christmas thing. Uh, but we were definitely, if it, the easier the entire process was, the better. Um, so there, I know there was one, and again, I don't remember if this was Christmas. We're not really a cookie baking family. Mm. <sighs> um, but there was one we would get uh, the the Chinese noodles. Uh, whatever, what are they called? Oh, the crunchy noodles, chow mein, chow mein noodles. Chow noodles, and we cover them in chocolate. Scotch it's make- crunchies. Sure, that's I call what them our haystacks. family calls them. Haystacks. haystacks. <laughs> we call them haystacks. But we would make those all the time because they were so easy. And I, I, yeah. I would eat a bag of chow mein noodles by mm. themselves without even being cookies. I, mm-hmm. No shame. Yeah, no they're shame. amazing. But yeah, we're definitely, mm-hmm. definitely a strong snowball family. My sister-in-law's family, though, they are cookie baking like maniacs. This probably it sounds very similar to what your family does. They will bake cookies for an entire Christmas season. They also have seven kids, so mm-hmm. I mean, my sis, my sister-in-law is one of seven. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of when the family gets together, there are a lot of people there, and they all mm-hmm. bake cookies. And so there's yep. like cinnamon nut diamonds, which are really good. And I think my favorite one that they make is this chocolate mint thing i don't even know what it is but it's so good i i ate myself sick on those one year (laughs) so that's my story happens nice (laughs) we also do cookie baking every year my personal favorite is the raspberry jam thumbprint oh Um, yes those are sort of a year-round kind of a deal um so i do enjoy sort of the whimsy of rolling and cutting out christmas cookies and decorating them with Jimmy's. Um, but what I, re- I, the more I thought about this today, I like making Christmas like confections, not necessarily mm. cookies, mm. but like I'm into like the whole like candy making or like fudge or Oreo uh. balls or peanut butter balls or what's the pretzel turtle candies. Like I'm just about mm. making like tiny little bite size. Bits of joy that taste good. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily some of them are no bake. Some mm-hmm. of them are require a little baking, but that's that's kind of what I I like. Yeah, more so than anything. I'm very tr- tradition centric. I mean, if you ask my kids, there are no Christmas cookies besides those sugar cutout cookies with oh. the frosting. Um, so we always have to do those. But then there's a um, and actually, both of these recipes I'm about to mention, I've never actually made by myself. <laughs> so I couldn't tell you exactly how they're made. But on my on my father's side of the family, my, my grandmother made these wonderful honey cookies, Ooh. which are sort of like the sugar cutout cookies, only, you know, almost fat-free and with honey instead of sugar. And they're just amazingly <laughs> chewy and delicious. Um, and then on my my husband's side of the family, my grandmother-in-law makes these uh, pfeffernus, which are <gasps> nothing like the pfeffernus you buy in the store. They're like, <laughs> there's no powdered sugar involved. They look really dull, you uh-huh. know, like a, a little so brown nubbin of a cookie. But nubbin. then you bite into it and it's got this anise seed that is, and my mm. husband will eat these mm. by the pint. Um, in fact, his grandmother for the first uh, however many years of our marriage, every year we would get a, a care package that included a gallon Ziploc bag of peppermints. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and but that's that's one reason I've never had to make it because she supplied it, and I don't know if if that will continue um, for indefinitely. So I I have the recipe, and I need mm. to just you know crank them out. But they're so that's a, but then my personal favorite Christmas cookie, I love the peanut blossoms, sometimes called the peanut butter blossoms. Mm. Um, yes, <laughs> I don't know. Actually, you, I heard you say that before. What I don't, I don't have a okay, concept in my head of what it is. It's gooey peanut butter. You've, I know you've seen these. Okay, it's gooey peanut butter cookies with the Hershey Kiss plunked down in the middle of them. Oh, a Buckeye. Yeah. Oh, the, the, you Ohioan. No, oh, no, 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 no. You know better no. than that. Well, my sister-in-law's sister's family lives in Ohio, and they call them Buckeyes, and I growl. Okay, but no, that's what no, I know they them are, as. They are called peanut blossoms. That, okay. I like um, that name better. I will use that now. <laughs> and my my grandmother made these, I think, pretty much for her grandkids, because I never saw her eat one. But my goodness, they were always the first one to go. Yeah, those yeah. are really um, good. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So sort of like if if a Reese's cup was a Christmas cookie, yes. that would be the the peanut blossom, and I love them immoderately. It's true. Yeah, I have um, nowadays we don't really bake cook. Well, I can't eat most cookies right now, but when I could a few years ago, we always go to to Trader Joe's and we always get their gingerbread 
and their revenues. <laughs> and also, um, when we lived in Chicago, Chris Kindle Market, that was the place to get cookies and mm. sweets. And so whenever we went there, we wouldn't really buy much of anything from the stalls of people selling, except in the sweets house. Yes. And that's where we would get the Pfeffer news, like the legit German from Germany Pfeffer news. I'm proud of you. Nice. That Rachel's story reminded me of, of the wonderfulness mm-hmm. that is Chris Kindle Market in Chicago. But anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've got a major sugar rush, and I only had one cookie, but I think it's all this talking about cookies. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like, I'd like you, if you have it, to go ahead and post the recipe of that quintessential Christmas cookie or confection that you love. We'll set up a thread so that we can share these, but uh, listeners out there... I'd love for you guys to also share what what are the quintessential recipes that you have, the ones that are unique that that you haven't encountered anywhere else but are amazing. Let's share these recipes and see what what new Christmas cookie you might want to try out this year. Yeah, Brie, how Online is it? Online cookie swap. Yes. yes. How is it, Brie? Can you hear it? <laughs> I felt I'll just stop. <laughs> I felt betrayed. Uh oh. Because when I realized 15 minutes ago that you chose these instead of fudge, fudge meltaways, meltaways. <laughs> I was like, ah. So I was, I was like, why, why would you forsake me like hmm. that? <laughs> but. Dang, they're really good. These are really good. I've had like five. You're just sitting over there eating them. I'm just like throwing them back, like because they're so small, you can yes, just and they're are. just, and yeah. just they're like Eat delicate them. and just delicious. Uh-huh. Yeah, and they're like buttery. So, uh, they are. A couple and of just, substitution notes, please. Oh, yes. um, just since we did the recipe mm-hmm. over here, we didn't have quick oats because I don't keep quick oats in yeah. the house. So we did yeah. it with old fashioned oats. I would actually go with the quick oats. I feel like the yeah. texture is better. Yeah. Um, we also are not a pecan family. Mm-hmm. We are an almond family. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So we used almonds. Flavors amazing. Like I would totally do that substitution again. Uh, Aaron, <laughs> I know that you're probably giving me the death stare right now. And I would love to try them with pecans too. But if you have another favorite nut, it, the cookie does not lose anything. I I that. actually feel that is an acceptable personal <laughs> taste substitute. So yes, I'm and I'm glad to hear that it was a successful substitute. Did you use like Definitely. sliced almonds or we use uh, slivered toasted that mm-hmm. were then crushed up a little bit extra? Okay, okay, mm, that sounds good. amazing. Good. You could dip mm-hmm. half of this into some chocolate too. Oh, I was gonna oh, say I'm sure you could dip. You could like fondue be. this or something. Or the bottom. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fondue yeah. it. Fondue it. Hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the consensus is delicious. Everyone should make them. Save me from myself. <laughs> Have we found a recipe yet that we don't all love? Aaron, mm, you're no. like three for three here. Aaron is definitely three for three. <laughs> <laughs> what? Keep it coming. <laughs> We'll have to find a recipe that it, we all hate because otherwise <laughs> not. no one's going to trust our verdict. Let's not. Hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. If you any of you try this recipe out, let us know what you think. Absolutely. So you can find us in the Facebook group, the Lutheran Ladies Lounge on Facebook. You can always find our content at kfuo.org slash Lutheran Ladies Lounge or on your favorite podcasting app. Please share your recipes and your cookies and all of their deliciousness in the Facebook group. We'd love to see it. You're listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm Bree. And I'm Rachel. Views and opinions expressed on the Lutheran Ladies' Lounge podcast may not represent the official position of the management or ownership of KFUO Radio, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. The Lutheran Ladies' Lounge is produced by KFUO Radio and available at kfuo.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Join our community on Facebook in the Lutheran Ladies' Lounge. Um, And as always... uh, Listen, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm going to cut this part out because this is, it's almost five o'clock on a Friday. Oh my You're listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm Bree. And I'm Rachel.